Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KT Confidential, the real estate podcast. Today, Ariel and I are answering the most commonly Googled real estate questions. Enjoy. Today's podcast, KT Confidential, we are talking about the most commonly Googled real estate questions. So this is a blog by Realtor.ca. And how can you find it? So those listening that want to see this blog, well, I'll just we'll write our own version. Okay, so you let's just go check out our. So you're gonna ask me a bunch of questions. In fact, maybe that's how you ended up on this video because you clicked the link that I'm going to make in the future in the blog to the video. There you go. Right. All right. So you haven't seen these yet. So you, no? this is new for you. I've quickly glanced at them, but this is completely unknown to you. So, so first, this is, so hang on. This is. You found it on the Realtor.ca app? Yes. And okay. according to them, these are the most commonly Googled real estate I didn't questions. know they're posting blogs. Good on them. Yeah. <clears throat> so, common question number one. Yes. I don't know that these are in any particular order. Why do I need a home inspection? Need. Right. The quick answer is you don't. Yeah. And if you go back to, is it how many episodes ago did we talk about the true so, cost of a... Well, that's it. So two things. And I just had this conversation with buyers of ours this week. One, what is the true cost? So go back and listen to two podcasts ago, three podcasts ago, whatever, where we talked about exactly that. I won't repeat it. But number two, if you don't have a home inspection... What's the worst that's going to happen is all of a sudden you find deficiencies that you didn't know about had you had the inspection. Well, I guess that premise... So what is... deficiencies are you going to find down the road that are going to cost you money or, or immediately that are going to cost you money that the home inspector would have found? Right. And what price is that, right? right. Like is the home inspector... Opening up the walls and looking for mold? Are they looking for leaks? Are there, you know, like they can only see what they can see with their eyes. Yes, some of them do have the infrared, which is good to, you know, see for heat loss and insulation, potential leaks, things like that. But I mean, for the most part, every home has a deficiency. Even brand new homes, there's going to be problems. So now put a put a price on it. So let's just say there's a home inspection and the deficiencies are ten grand. What are you going to do? You're not going to buy the house for ten grand in deficiencies? Maybe. I, I think that's what people need to figure out, right? You just ask yourself well, the question it. before buying it. Yeah. And it depends on how much competition. I say there the is. same thing when we're in multiple offers because oftentimes in a multiple offer situation on the nice homes you. You're not going to get the home if you have conditions on it. Right. That's the market we live in. So the other question I ask for people, and this is a little bit different topic, but if your max is a million bucks and you found out the other buyer got the deal because they were offering more money and you found out it sold for a million ten thousand. Do you say, oh, man, coulda, shoulda, woulda? Or do you say, ah, if they were willing to pay that, then they can have it. Right. Whatever that number is. And then, you know, you have to have your uh, threshold. Like, what what is your comfort level? So do you need a home inspection? No, you don't, really, at the end of the day. Do we recommend one? Sure. Can you buy the nicest homes that are priced well in the good locations and have a condition no. on home inspection right now? Probably not. No. There's your answer. Sure. Next question. Why can a seller reject my offer? So I've had a lot of this recently where... Is that a real question? That's a real question. What so I, mean, What do you mean, why can a seller reject I'm my I'm just offer? reading you the questions, okay? I don't know what these people are thinking when they're Googling, but I, I'll, I'll give you a scenario as to these how These are I the most Googled topics. Yeah, so this is how I interpret somebody Googling that. They are all pissed off because a seller rejected their offer. Well, right. what, what did they do? They what? offered them... Uh, so a lower... They They... They hoodwinked the market by listing their million dollar home for nine hundred and twenty five thousand right. dollars, and you offered them the nine twenty five, and they said no. Right. 
because yeah. the expectations were different. Yeah. This isn't Lowe's where when you walk in and the price tag says something, they have to honor it. This is a private seller selling their Although home. I believe that would be great for the real estate market. I've said that there should be a buy it now button on our website. There should be. But yeah. it wouldn't be the $900,000 no. price tag on a million dollar home. But wouldn't it be nice if the home was valued at a mil million bucks and you could go on to our website and hit buy it now and actually facilitate that transaction. That would be very good. Yeah. Except the seller might be leaving money on the table. Well, that's the because thing, Because you're right? not exposing it to the widest audience possible market and giving conditions. opportunity for people to compete, which is why we are in the market we're in. That's you're right. welcome. You're welcome. Anyways, that's how I interpreted it. Somebody offered the price. Probably. Didn't realize. And there's but a lot to of that right on, now. To elaborate on that... A seller can refuse any offer at any time. They don't have to accept anything. That's right. And they can accept an, any offer at any time. It's very frustrating, actually. I've, there was one house that I had clients that were interested in. They were holding offers. And offer night came. We were the only offer. So we offered them the asking price, knowing they weren't going to accept it. Uh, just But just to see what they'd come back with. And they came back with a number that was $100,000 higher. And we said, thanks, but no thanks. And then, you know, we kept watching it. It was on the market for two to three more weeks. And the price never changed. That's annoying. Okay, I, I, that's a horrible strategy. If it pisses people off. Um, and, it and the house showed like crap. Yeah, and it didn't work for them. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's the answer to your question. Next is how do realtors assess a home's value? I guess it depends on who you're asking. But generally speaking, a realtor who is active in the market and in you know homes regularly has their finger on the pulse of the market some people can like certain houses you and i could just pull a number out of our head and be very accurate other homes we may need to pull sales data and compare them to the subject house and you know make adjustments for the differences it's a long process uh, it's called a comparative market analysis and your realtor may or may not provide one but there's so many factors. The market changes think, from week to week right now. I think I'm very good at doing that. I think most on the team would agree. Thank you. There is one part. Did he just thank himself. I'm confused of what happened there. There is one part <laughs> of that process that they <clears throat> never, <throat> ever teach you in school when you're getting your license. The condition of the home, the way it looks, feels, and smells when you're inside it and outside, but the overall appeal has a huge factor in its actual market value, its street value. There's a difference between the book value. Well, we have the KT factor that we right. take into account KT with our verified. Pricing. That's right. Mm-hmm. A nice homes sell for more money. It's true. The well-presented, nice homes yeah. that appear clean and well-maintained are always going to sell for more money and in less time. Yeah. So to answer this question, I mean, there's so many different ways a home can be valued. Um, and if you look at the market right now, it's a clear indication that not everybody knows what they're doing. And sometimes the realtor sets the list price and sometimes the homeowner is yeah, a lot of times in control, right? A lot of times you have realtors that are desperate to get business. And despite their, call it an appraisal, despite their appraisal of the property, the seller is the ultimate dictator of what the offer is, what the price offering is. Yeah. So if I say to that seller, it's worth a million bucks, not a cent more. And they say, well, let's just try at 1.1. Well, there's a there's a, a guy who interviewed me and he didn't like my price. I was a few hundred thousand dollars lower than where he wanted to be. I told him. On what type of a price point for the home? A few million dollars. Okay. And... Um, so anyways, he told me, oh, I think you're maybe better at buying houses than selling houses. That's what he told me. He said that to you? Yeah. Like in a nice way, like we, we were getting along quite well. Um, 
Anyways, I couldn't convince him otherwise. So, you know, I let it go. Moved on. It's still for sale for 500k more than I suggested. It's been on sale for months. And he yeah, he's like, "Oh, my house is always You should call him and tell within him within days. Uh, the, you, you should call him and tell him I've in the time your home's been on the market, I've helped 22 people buy <laughs> homes." <laughs> well, that's cuz I'm a good I'm a good buyer's agent, that's apparently. That's why I'm joking yeah, about it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Okay. On to the next. What is a conditional sale? Are these real fucking questions? Um, they may have just come up with content for their blog. What? What is a conditional sale? Uh, it's exactly what it means. There are conditions to be fulfilled in order for that agreement to be completed. So a common, common question I get from people is, oh, can what we... What are typical conditions? We can talk about no, that. No, we don't need to waste your time with that because that's unrelated, but... I would say some people, you get buyers and sellers. So buyers say, well, can we still put an offer on the house? Sellers say, well, can I still accept an offer? If it's conditional. Right. Yeah. So the answer is sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so if one of the conditions happens to be a condition that allows the, I'll give you an example. If there's a condition on the sale of the buyer's home and they have what's referred to as an escape clause, usually they have, you know, a set period of time to either firm up on the offer or or cancel the offer to allow the new buyer to purchase it, assuming the seller has accepted that uh, new buyer's offer, if that makes sense. But generally speaking... Well, it makes sense to, you, to me and you, but I'm not sure about everybody listening. But generally speaking, if it's conditional from a seller's perspective, you're probably not getting many showings anymore. You're probably not getting any more offers. Yeah. And even if you did, it would be conditional on the other offer falling apart. You, you can still Most, sell during a conditional right. period, but um, and you can even accept another offer during a conditional period, but it has to be conditional on the original offer uh, being mutually released. That's right. Which is also a bit of a conflict of interest if you think about it, if the other offer is better and then the first offer has a home inspection, let's say, and they come back asking for things, they can say, oh, well, nope, we're not doing anything. Take it or leave well, it. That's we ideal. Gotta, we gotta, yeah, that's ideal for the sellers, for sure. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't happen, happen often. No. Generally speaking, once a house is sold conditionally, the activity plummets and people are sitting on the sidelines waiting to see what happens. And here's the thing in multiple offer situation, especially the hottest time for a home to sell and to sell for the most amount of money possible is very early in the listing period. I would say in the first two weeks. And that's what? Go ahead. And that's generally where, um, as a seller, you should be maximizing your opportunity, especially for price. Mm -hmm. So accepting a conditional offer during that period kind of is pulling you out of, out of the market because buyers don't really want to see it. They don't want to get their hopes up. Agents don't really want to get their hopes up. So showings go down dramatically and almost come to a halt. And if those conditions don't get fulfilled or um, uh, waived, then... You're back on the market. Usually if it's sold in five days and you're conditional for five business days, you're back on the market probably at that two-week period where you've lost some of that momentum. Yeah. And it's, and and those days on market, quote-unquote, is still rolling. So, Which leads into the next question of how okay. long will it take to sell my home? Uh, that's a great question. That's a question that everybody selling their property should ask. But that is a wide open, open ended answer. Could be a day to a year to. Depends where the home is. What your expectations, how realistic your expectations are. Yeah. It depends on the condition of the home, how the home shows. Is there a demand for your home? Right. right. Like I can pick a town home here in, in Milton and say there's 20 other people that want to buy it. If you don't, you take the same town home and try and sell it in Fergus. How many people are up in Fergus? Well, actually, there's a lot of buyers right now in Fergus, but that was a bad example. I'll shut up now. But you made your point. Yeah. What keeps buzzing on this thing? It was vibrating. It was like a GG notification. I have a You're few. trying to sell stuff? Buy. You're trying to buy? Yeah. What are you trying to buy? Maybe, Extra, maybe exercise some. equipment. Yeah. So More I, exercise equipment that yeah. you don't use? 
No, I do use it. So I bought, um, so I need a dumbbell rack for my dumbbells, obviously. That's what the rack is made for. Right. I need um, a treadmill. You just sold your treadmill. No, I sold a stationary bike. But you had a treadmill before the stationary bike. I got the stationary bike because the treadmill broke. Oh, I see. Yeah. It broke. Yes. Overuse? Yes. <laughs> I got, and then, uh, but I specific, I want a Bowflex uh, treadmill 22. Okay. And they're hard to come by used. Why Why do you want that one specifically? Um, <clears throat> it's a nice treadmill. It has a big screen. And their their program, their membership is the cheapest of all the memberships. And you can have as many users as you want. Whereas something like Peloton, you have to have one paid membership per user. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, How much is the membership? It's like 20 bucks a month. Oh. Huh. Yeah. How much is the treadmill? And you don't and you don't need the membership. So that's another nice thing too. You can track certain things without it. Then what do you put on the screen? Uh Netflix. It has a bunch of apps built in. Mm-hmm. Streaming services. I probably won't use them. I like listening to my podcasts or music with my headphones. But Alicia would probably use it for that. Mm. And then uh So how much is the treadmill? New, it's thirty five hundred dollars. For a treadmill? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, used, used? you can get two to twenty two hundred. Well, if anybody knows somebody that has a Bowflex twenty two, call Adrian. He's looking to buy. What else are you buying? Um, Dumbbell uh, rack. A, I just picked up um, a small. Probably you can just go rack. over to Adrian's house. You don't need a I membership. Just a, I just got a squat rack on the weekend. Yeah, I've been researching For that. For the bathroom. I don't. I don't get it. You know what a squat rack is? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I picked one up in Toronto. I drove to Toronto Sunday morning, picked it up, came home, had all the plates. So I just need a barbell for that. And then I'm good. Then I got everything I need. Then I just need to use it. Right. Which is, you know, I'm working myself up to it. I look at it every day. Yeah. When is the best time to sell my home? Are you selling anything on Kijiji right now? No, nothing to sell. Oh, you see, you should be selling something oh, at the same time as buying. Oh, us. I see. When is the best time to sell my home? So whenever you want. To, what are your reasons for moving? It's, you know, that question gets asked all the time. A lot of people think it's the spring. Let me tell you, it's usually not. It's usually before the spring. This, Yeah, it is in spring, but spring is happening now in January, February. Maybe not outside, Even un- but in the market. Unrelated to the weather, it's usually you know, three to four weeks before March. Right. Roughly. Which is February. End of January, early February. It's usually a really good time. But I would say in an average year. July is also a good time. In an average year. October is also a good time. A house that sells in October will sell for more in October than it would have sold in the prime time we're talking about. Quiet on the set. Right? So if you have a house. If you have a house. To sell in February, and you say, oh, I don't need to. I'm going to wait till November. November, generally, the prices are going up. So, Except for last year. Except for the occasional year. So by November, the house should be worth more money. But then, you know, are you just moving into a new house and buying a new house? Well, it really doesn't matter then because the house you're buying is worth more too. Always buy and sell in the same market. So the key there is make sure if you're buying first, make sure your house is ready to go. Don't buy right. and then decide to paint and renovate and that puts you in a pickle. Why do I need to qualify for a mortgage? Well, that's kind of stupid. Where are these Where, questions are these coming from? Yeah. Like how the, stupid are the people Are you asking? paying cash? No. Well, then obviously you need to qualify for a mortgage. You need to do it beforehand. Why do I need to qualify for a mortgage? I don't really need something else. Yeah, that doesn't... What... Do they have answers there? I want to see what. In or, it just says in order to qualify for a mortgage. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they were just being like These are chat GPT answers. Probably. Uh, how much of a down payment do I need to buy a home? Anywhere from 5% and up. You can get mortgages for less. You can get lending with less than 5% down. You may not like the terms though. No. Uh, and you might long, be paying a guy named long, Tony with bags of cash every month, yes. but that's okay. How long does it take to buy a home? 
Well, Ariel's good at this. He work with some clients occasionally that take a while. And then some others are really fast. <laughs> most, most of my transactions. Yeah. It's, what's the question? How long does it take to buy a home? Uh, that should yeah. be that should be how long does it take to find a home? Because once you find a home, buying it's easy. Right. So maybe we could talk about the two steps. Finding and then buying. Yes. Depends how much of your criteria is important to you and not important to you. Right. Um, generally speaking, as the process goes on, you modify your criteria based on what you're seeing in the market in your price range. It's common that the uh, house that someone envisioned themselves buying is very different from what they buy. And it's very common with buyers that take a longer time to buy that their what they envisioned is just simply unaffordable. And there's many times... And what should people do in that stage is bite the bullet, and it's another stepping stone for you. Just like if you bought a home as a first-time home buyer that maybe wasn't your home you envisioned at that time, you had to buy something that was smaller, cheaper, whatever. Well, if you can't afford that perfect home right now, take another stepping stone. Well, because the worst thing I've seen that happens is people sell and then they're so picky, they don't buy, they fall out of the market, they rent, and then they can't afford to get back in. Yeah. Or even not renting, they're just waiting, 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 and in this case, the market is going at some point, we're now into May, let's say, at some point this summer, before the fall, at some point this summer, we're going to see another spike in the prices. And it I could very agree. well come with a reduction um, of interest rates, especially if the overnight rate comes down. We'll see. I agree. And then you're going from a double car garage home with four bedrooms to a single car garage home with three bedrooms. Like the shift could be that dramatic. Right. Any other questions? Uh, do I need a realtor to buy a new build? Well, I mean, you don't need a realtor to buy anything, but there's always benefits to it. So it depends on, I guess, what you're buying, how qualified you are and how comfortable you are doing it with or without one. But with new builds specifically, sometimes real estate agents or brokerages, um, will have um, units allocated to them. So they may have... Platinum access. Yeah, So they and they may legitimately have easier access to buy something rather than lining up and going through the normal methods. So yes, there's definitely benefits to it. Um, whereas I would say doing it on your own, there's zero benefits. So why, Well, and they might be able you? to negotiate something that you wouldn't be familiar with. Yeah, advise you on things to consider when looking at different floor plans or you know, which exposure is better than others or which floor, et Which cetera, upgrades et to take. Or where which to builders use to avoid. Yes. Uh, why should I work with a realtor? Well, I mean, that's a long answer. That's another podcast. That's another podcast. Um, Maybe we'll do that on the next <clears throat> podcast. It's a good idea. All right. Well, there you go. Next time you can tune in. We'll talk about why you should hire a realtor. Simple question. Sounds good. Ciao. Bye-bye. There you have it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode.